Uh, well, on behalf of the um, organizing committee of this conference, uh, I would like to start by uh, thanking our hosts, um, University of Crete, of course, and um, the lovely city of uh, Rethymnon, uh, and that is uh, providing us with this uh, beautiful venue. Um, and also, of course, I would like to say thank you for um, Arcwork for uh, providing us with this um, opportunity to uh, get together and talk about this topic. It's nice to see uh, all of you here, finally. Um, this has been um, an event uh, uh, planned for a long time. Actually, it's been uh, almost two years since uh, during a, an ARC work um, training school, it was, uh, a lunch where uh, Tonya and Math Edgeworth here, this is sitting here, and you will hear more about him uh, from him uh, in a while, but uh, we were discussing how people who are working on the subject of um, studying uh, archaeological practices and how to do that, how people are uh, working sort of in isolation and uh, we were talking about the need for getting together and Tonya just said, well, let's um, um, organize a conference on this topic and uh, here we are today, uh, two years later and um, a lot of people have um, put a lot of work into this to make it happen. Um, and um, we will start with um, just introducing the topic of, and the different themes of this uh, conference. And um, we'll start from the beginning with uh, some of the backgrounds and uh, my colleague Tonya will talk about this. Yeah, it's just to give you a short idea about the perspectives. It's uh, generally, I would say, it's moving beyond these ideas of a positivistic uh, concept of an archaeological knowledge of that we are finding objective facts on the ground, that we can divide raw data completely separated from the interpretation, and moving to the notion of archaeological knowledge production as a creation of knowledge production which is inspired by <coughs> approaches by science and technology studies and others, and started mostly with the book you see here on the left side, uh, and uh, the PhD Matt Edgeworth wrote, and the book he edited here, so. And um, also um, one of the first books were made by uh, Gavin Lucas in 2001, Critical Approaches to Fieldwork, and 2012, then understanding the archaeological record, you see here on the slide. And uh, just some central elements, I think, which are most important are that um, archaeological knowledge production, the fieldwork, is seen as a materializing practice, the practice who's materializing the knowledge um, by creating artifacts, which means not only the finds, but of course documents, uh, reports, uh, uh, tables. Um, maps and so on. And this is connected with the idea of or with processes of disaggregating and assembling again, assemblages of finds. And um, this is happening through many steps, which uh, besides others, uh, other people also Bruno Latour called circulating references, or he's also s described as, as a process of translation. So f coming from the material ma uh, stuff through the drawing, the text, the map, the reports, and so on. And this is also connected with the notion that all actors have agency, not only the human actors, but of course the non-human actors as well. And I think from these perspectives you get new ideas how to analyze uh, how new technologies changing materializing processes and how new technologies creating new for artifacts, new finds, new translations. Yeah, since then the topic of course got more attention and just give you an uh, example, 
book Archaeological Ethnographies, uh, which you find there on the slide, which is um, moving more a bit also to the topic of public archaeology, or on the slide, the last book on the right side uh, by Swedish archaeologists, showing that the topic also spread to other countries as well, and here more um, on a historical approach, looking to the history of archaeological knowledge production. Yeah, so just a rough idea about our perspective. So uh, the theme of the conference is uh, the changing circumstances of archaeological practice. Those are the shifting grounds that we are talking about. And not only that, but we want to uh, talk about how these changing circumstances impact our studies of archaeological practice and our knowledge production. So that's the main uh, theme of the conference. And we um, phrased this uh, in our call for papers uh, as um, a key question. Uh, giving, given these shifting grounds, how can we best apprehend the current state of the field, the ways in which it is changing and where it's heading in the future? So we are also interested in how this is changing us and, and where this is taking us uh, in, in the future. Uh, what are the possibilities and what are the threats uh, for, coming, uh, for, uh, for, the, for coming research? Um, so what are these shifting grounds? Well, uh, we heard some, some of the uh, examples mentioned in the two uh, former um, speeches here uh, this afternoon, uh, but we have um, just made some um, points and um, because there are several factors that, uh, that uh, are, that are um, impacting archaeological practices and Methodological changes, of course, is the major one with the uh, digital, uh, increasing uh, digital um, tools and methods that are being used uh, in both acquiring data, analyzing data, and as well as storing it and, and uh, the dissemination of data. And of course, uh, issues uh, uh, connected to accessibility and standardization, etc., are connected to, to this. Uh, to these changes. Uh, another um, connected change is, of course, the changing character of data because of these methodological changes. Uh, there is a changed uh, accessibility to, um, to the data, the volume of the data, and um, we also get new analytical and statistical methods um, connected to this. For example, we have, of course, the issue of big data, and we have a new um, a dating analysis. This is, for example, a statistical um, Bayesian analysis that you can use. Um, and um, also, of course, the, the more knowledge, the, the more nuanced knowledge we get from this is also changing our practices. Uh, we also have material changes. Uh, new forms and new scales of material evidence. Uh, this is, um, for example, in contemporary archaeology, you can, you can see it. And the digital um, uh, methods also allow us to um, study things in 3D. We, are, uh, we can also uh, uh, have uh, 3D printed materials. Uh, for example, there is a, uh, a project in Lund University now that we are 3D printing um, lots of um, materials from artifacts from our study uh, collections to uh, see how that works with um, educational purposes. Also, uh, for lack of a better word, um, inter interpretative uh, changes uh, connected to the new uh, perspectives and the uh, possibilities that we get from these methodological changes. Uh, for example, 3D modeling and uh, the uh, uh, increased accessibility of data. This is an, uh, uh, this is an, uh, an example from uh, Rome, uh, a 3D, a very carefully made three, uh, virtual uh, reconstruction that you can visit with um, um, 
3D goggles, what you call them, VR goggles, and um, you can, after, visit the ruins in uh, the Forum, which is uh, quite a, an experience, actually. Um, and that also changes our practices and how we um, handle and deal with materials. Of course, there are other um, factors that, uh, uh, that impact uh, archaeology in, in a more uh, general way. And economic changes, of course, is one of them. Uh, we have uh, increased economic pressures in, for example, uh, contract archaeology, but we also see it in, in uh, more strained uh, economic uh, circumstances for research in, in several countries, uh, just as an example. Uh, we also have the political changes in the world. Um, we have a, 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 a political environment in Europe and, and also other places <coughs> that is changing, and, and archaeology and heritage uh, are sometimes used as uh, a political tools, uh, and that's something that we also have to uh, take into account and, and uh, uh, be aware of. Um, for example, heritage can be used as nationalistic symbols. Uh, there's also the question of looting and also a question of the displacement of uh, heritage. Here's an example of the destruction of uh, the Ark uh, from Palmyra that was um, 3D printed and uh, reconstructed in London uh, a couple of years ago. And um, last but not least, we have changes in other um, sciences that affect us also in a very profound way. Uh, we have, for example, uh, the debate in, in Anthropocene that um, is uh, coming from geology and we have also the various natural sciences that um, provide us with methods and uh, new data um, that influence how we deal with um, our data. Uh, for example, ancient DNA and isotope analysis and so on. So all these changes of course impact the study of archaeological practices in various ways and we see a lot of um, examples in the presentations that will be uh, given here today. We have a, a very uh, broad and interesting collection of papers and posters uh, that deal with these different changing circumstances and on the consequences these changes have for our practices and um, the use of our uh, digital or, uh, tools and methods. Uh, for example, um, there are um, presentations here discussing um, the acquisition and documentation, the standardization, the use and reuse of data, interpretation, visualization, participation and uh, community practices, uh, dissemination to both an academic and to a general public, and uh, short-term and long-term archiving. And those are just uh, uh, some examples that uh, we will hear about and see uh, on the posters upstairs. This is, all, of course, tied to um, the um, very, um, perhaps fragmented or um, multi-faceted theoretical framework that we see in archaeology today. Uh, Tonya has uh, talked a little bit about these things. I thought I'd just mention the broad frameworks just to, to frame uh, some of this uh, discussion. We have, for example, the, the, um, the trend uh, of post-humanism uh, and, and uh, what that means, uh, we have, I'm not going to uh, go into all these details, I realize we are uh, perhaps uh, running a bit late, but, uh, and we have the environmental humanities, um, and what that uh, does to our uh, archaeologies. Uh, a few years ago, Bjarnar Olsen uh, predicted the end of national archaeologies, because we have this possibility to access each other's data. And um, a few years on, we still uh, don't see really that, but um, 
things are changing. And of course, then we have a new materialism, and uh, Tonya was mentioning a little bit about this um, earlier. And I would just like to point out that we, we have talked about materiality for a long time, of course, and also when it comes to um, handling of archaeological, um, uh, the, the archaeological practices. Um, but I would say that if, um, if we were uh, talking about new material, uh, uh, materials before as material, materialism, uh, we were perhaps giving human, um, um, human character, characteristics to things. But I would say that uh, the new materialism is about uh, <coughs> seeing things as things. And um, perhaps I should also just mention the last bit uh, here that uh, it's uh, directly um, uh, relevant to uh, archaeological practices that we are uh, seeing a, a renewed uh, interest in um, archaeological practices perhaps because we are talking about the digital tools as having an agency and we'll be hearing more about that uh, later today when uh, Jeremy Huggett uh, gives his presentation. And um, also I think perhaps we are seeing a, a more um, renewed focus on, uh, for example, discussions on workflows and best practice and so on. And uh, I think perhaps this renewed interest comes from this digital turn, that we have so many new tools and new um, practices that we have to, to discuss it. And I think that's um, this whole arc work um, network is a, is a result of that. Um, but in this whole um, theoretical uh, discussion, uh, we see, as I said, it's very fragmented, and there's a lot of contradicting trends in it. I thought I would just uh, mention a few of them, because we're seeing this, uh, what Christian Christiansen has uh, named the third scientific revolution in archaeology, uh, is um, somewhat contradictory to the the focus on social issues, for example, in uh, humanities and social scientists that, um, that we're seeing, for example, in new, new geography and so on. Uh, also, another uh, contradiction is the calls that we see from uh, people uh, to um, introduce slow archaeology or slow academia, actually. Uh, and all the um, arguments that we are hearing uh, that we will save t time and money, be more efficient if we just use these tools. And um, that's uh, also a little bit of a contradiction. Another one is that uh, we have these new tools that uh, will enable a democratization, enable more groups to take part in the, in the discussion of heritage and so on. But we also have an unequal accessibility to these tools. What does it take to take part in digital heritage? You have to have the hardware, the software, you have to have the technical know-how and you have to have the social skills to participate. Another uh, contradiction um, is uh, the, the, the possibilities that we have to use and reuse data uh, that the digital, for example, then enables the accessibility both across time, like we can use um, data from um, previous excavations and so on, and we can also use um, data from completely uh, new places. But we also have uh, a problem of reusability and the comparability and the also nationalistic politics that uh, can get in the way. And also there is, uh, I was just thinking about um, Anna Flavia yesterday made me aware of another um, contradiction that um, we have um, uh, the integrity of people uh, to, um, um, I didn't write this down, so I, I, we were talking about the integrity of people that um, we, uh, help me Anna, what, what were we saying? Right, that we have to all the that we 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Now I remember. Yeah. Yeah, because we have this. Uh, we have to have everything have to be open access, and and then uh, if you have uh, a material that is. Uh, tied to certain individuals that uh, it's not possible to make it uh, open access. Uh, and uh, that is also a contradiction that uh, needs to be addressed, I think. Yeah, I give the... Yeah, this is just uh, to introduce you to the uh, last session of the conference, uh, this call, find, uh, way of a round table discussion, but an open round table panel. This is the last panel then um, of the conference. And it's meant that we just um, collect ideas or comments, statements, whatever, about what we take from the conference, what are the topics we discussed, what do we see as important. And um, I uh, have some people who already were so kind to be willing to contribute to this with comments. So it's Matt Edgeworth, um, Alison Mickel, Mary Layton, Jeremy Huggett, and Paul uh, Riley already agreed to contribute. But as I said, it's an open uh, round table. So it's, everybody is invited to comment on it. So please join then the discussion and give comments about whatever you think is important to discuss. So this is just to already introduce you to the topic and please uh, think about what you think is important, what we are taking away from this conference and then please uh, join our discussion in the last uh, panel then. <laughs>